My name is uh, Jean-Marc Chouinard from the Chagnon Foundation. Very delighted uh, to be with you this afternoon. Very delighted also to do this, uh, this part of sharing. Uh, thanks for the invitation of uh, PFC also uh, for us to uh, have the opportunity to share. And also, uh, as you know, those kind of events are an opportunity also to organize our thoughts uh, around different kind of experience. And specifically, uh, I will today point out one of our experience partnering with government. Of course, uh, those kind of efforts stimulates us to continue to document uh, those kind of uh, efforts and experiences that will probably follow through after, uh, after today. I would also like to thank those who helped me organize my thoughts around this. Some of are here and around the table over here. Uh, please, all along uh, the, the, the talk, please understand that the following story has a shared responsibility. Uh, our foundation went through also a, a process, we're in existence in 15 years, our foundation went through a process of clarification that did also influence, of course, uh, this journey with uh, our Quebec government. Um, I'll, I have the challenge to do today to do this in English. I promise you I won't uh, change English to French every sentence. Uh, and I hope to do as well as our, one of our past prime minister was known in Quebec by a famous columnist as the only man speaking two second languages. then you could evaluate me after. <laughs> then the, uh, the title of uh, this, uh, this talk would be around, of course, the lessons learned with, uh, from dancing with the government. And how can we really, as partner, uh, find a common pace? I could have also add the right distance, the common pace, the right tempo. Um, our mission, just to put you, uh, I'll start first with a bit of a context because you won't be able really, uh, I think, to understand properly what was after the issues. Uh, I'll go through the main learnings and uh, do a couple of observations before uh, concluding. Then the first, just a bit of context, the Chagnon Foundation was founded in 2000 following the sale uh, of the family telecommunication business uh, Videotron. Uh, the mission of the foundation is to prevent poverty uh, through uh, educational achievement of young people living in Quebec. Uh, André Chagnon and Lucie, his late wife, understood the importance of um, public policy to the extent that uh, the vision of our organization was to influence government uh, to adopt policies, programs, and measure measures uh, that favor prevention of poverty. This is why uh, over the past uh, years, past 15 years, closely to 15 years, uh, the foundation has joined forces with the government in setting up three uh, specific partnerships on five to 10 year agreements. Each of the three agreements uh, was intended to address a specific issue and all three are essentially on the same model. I'll come back to this a bit uh, further. Through these agreements, the foundation has invested $360 million and succeeded in mobilizing equivalent resources uh, from our partner ministries. Um, different kind of opportunities with that partnership. In addition to the obvious uh, money leverage uh, for both partners, uh, we believe that the partnership with government would open up other kinds of opportunities, including, of course, increased capacity uh, for impact, especially the huge networks of different kind of ministries, uh, expertise, other resources, also be able to develop new expertise around those initiatives, uh, promote, of course, innovative initiatives also, and of course, what was the, one of the main goals was to establish, modify, or implement a public policy at all level, local, regional, or national. For the government, uh, the partnership represented a possibility for 
creating a space, a new space that would offer flexibility uh, in implementing complementary actions to action, public actions. And of course, sharing new practices and developing evaluation. Uh, in the following brief remark, I will focus on what our foundation has learned about the influence of philanthropy on public policy based on that partnership. Uh, just to follow, let's see if, okay, it works. Uh, the first agreement was concluded with the Ministère de la Santé in uh, 2002 and revolved around fostering healthy uh, lifestyles for young people in the perspective of educational achievement. At that time, the field of uh, public health was starting a shift and looked for different kind of new uh, resources and new association to push this agenda. In this climate, of course, the winds were thus more favorable uh, to new type of association. Uh, strongly encouraged by that first experience and in an attempt to complement uh, its poverty prevention initiatives, uh, with efforts to promote educational achievement, the government and the foundation agreed to sign two subsequent partnerships. The first dealt with early childhood development and was concluded with Le Ministère de la Famille, Family Services. And the second aimed to promote student success by lowering, lowering high school dropout rates and was concluded with Le Secretariat de la Jeunesse. The first two partnerships, the one on healthy lifestyles and early childhood, were secured in financial portion uh, from the government uh, through a 10-year legal agreement uh, that secured the, finance, uh, the financial portion of the government. Of course, as you might probably already say to yourself, very only rarely do government's commitments stretch over such long periods of time. And of course, that could be seen as a first achievement already on a public policy uh, standpoint. Uh, just to clarify also the structure of our partnership with government, uh, please allow, allow me to take a few moments to let, get, lead you through uh, these, uh, these governance model. Essentially, it's the same model for, for the, the three of them. Here it is. Uh, essentially, our partnership uh, was designed as a collaborative uh, relationship that would entail co-building and co-managing the newly created organization as a result of each agreement. Uh, the partnership board of director was uh, symmetrical with equal seats for each partner as well as seats reserved for representative of the civil society. And each agreement had a common goal to have a direct influence on public policies. Over the years, we forged good, uh, very good ties with our partner and our association achieved positive results in different targeted area, for example, uh, the support to 150 communities across Quebec in every region. Uh, of course, it involved more than 4,000 partners uh, around, uh, all around Quebec. There was, of course, thousands of strategies and action that were supported. Uh, hundreds of thousands of children and families were reached. It mobilized a lot of resources around uh, new, f new practices for practitioners. And also, several public institutions, even business community, uh, also uh, adopted priorities, measures, policies favorable to each of those specific areas. The duration of our agreement made it possible to introduce, of course, new ways of doing things, uh, thanks to our teamwork approach. It also enabled us to document the progression of implemented practices and to share the resulting knowledge. But in spite of the positive results for both partners, over the years, certain points of tension gradually began to arise in the background. In 2013, uh, following our own learnings from our internal process of development, and from listening to the needs to our field partners, we undertook negotiation with our partner to explore the possibility of renewing our agreements, uh, especially given that one of them was uh, set to, be to end very soon. Uh, in those conversations, our requirements were uh, a shared vision and a refocus of the partnership around prevention of poverty and educational achievement. Why refocus? Well, quickly, uh, when you have a specific area like healthy lifestyles, it's easy that the area becomes a finality instead of a mean to get to the, the mission. 
the development of the partnership in a way that would go further than a simple agreement between uh, two organizations, but would involve all the other stakeholders around that partnership. An agreement driven by our response to the needs of the community partner that asked for an integrated approach, that instead of having three different approach with three planning process, three, three everything actually, more, <coughs> uh, more an integrated approach. An agreement also driven by the efficiency as well, although that was not the driving force of the approach. And uh, to complete this, an integrated governmental leadership. Instead of talking to three ministries, uh, and education was not there, as you can see, uh, we wished to have in front of us a governmental position, not a ministry position. It is through these uh, negotiation and, of course, some pretty animated discussion on the guiding principles of our action, then with very concrete example of their implementation that we realized that there were major differences in culture between our two worlds. Last February, we made a common decision not to renew the actual model of partnership we had agreed on a few years ago. We will pursue, of course, our collaboration with government. We actually, we have to reinvent this to see how to best conciliate the attributes of philanthropy and public action for social change. Let's go into the cultural differences. My following comments will touch on issues uh, relating to what could be called the cultural differences between philanthropy and government, group into five uh, section, clarity of purpose, structure, uh, risk of tolerance, time horizons, and accountability. Let's start by uh, clarity of purpose. And I could add also consistency of purpose. When any individual or organization chooses to partner, for whatever purpose, the key to success, of course, is a deep understanding of the concept that will guide the partnership action and how each partner defines these concepts. Uh, to presume that your partner shares your vision of the guiding principle for your joint action is a mistake. In the specific case of our partnership with the Quebec government, irrespective of the ministry involved, we have discovered through our common work that our partner had a different understanding of the four key guiding principles of our action, community mobilization, community support, understand by companionment, uh, sustainability, and evaluation. We learned that it is not in the naming of the concept that lies the disc discrepancy, but rather in the concrete understanding of the implementation of these concepts. This became clear, for example, when we had to decide which specific strategy or action to support financially. The second one, of course, is uh, structure and or silos. As mentioned in the beginning, we have set up three different structures that we call funds, each, each with its own orientation in line with a specific issue. Given that we have started our own work by issue or specific goals, and given that working in silos tends to be a hallmark of governmental uh, culture, it is only natural that this organizational logic extended to our agreements. These organization characteristics significantly shaped our action, among other things, in terms of ties with the involved communities, which are weakened under such a fragmented and services-driven approach. Unlike philanthropic initiative, we can diverge from the beaten path to support innovative ideas, while the funds operation as close to small public agencies precluded any departure from the mainstream. At the end of the day, what has been the impact of this uh, threefold action on a complex set of poverty prevention and educational achievement issues? While the fact is that looking at each issue, issue through a different lens make it difficult or even impossible to, if, to take effective action, answer adequately the needs of families and community organization and to have a cross-sectional view of these problems. The third one, risk of tolerance, and that may be a more obvious one, the, foundra the foundation that set their sights and take action with a longer view of things, think of their resources as both patient and, ca uh, patient and risk capital. At their board tables, for example, often member will say, well, if we don't invest in this, who will? conveying a sense of longer-term commitment to taking a chance, learning from failure, and adapting accordingly. And the resulting timeline not only allows for, but encourages this continuous learning and progress towards a noble goal. We at the Foundation, uh, like 
many others wishing to change the world for the better, one small or a medium step at a time, wish to learn from our successes and embrace the learning that comes from more deeply understanding how and why something isn't working as expected. The, re the reason might be a poorly constructed grant or the failure of, to provide proper support in order to build leadership capacity for a project. And, short -term gov and government short-term view is driven by a deep sense of intolerance to risk. The difference in risk tolerance suggests that the full partnership with government for a society changing initiative or agenda can be difficult. Especially when it comes to support innovation. There are several examples. I don't have time to get into this. If the outcome of a project includes something like creativity, it is possible to succumb to the notion that this is a nice word, but too risky to support. New approaches are, by, by nature, approaches with uncertain outcomes, and they should not be supported based on outcome objectives. Philanthropy can, for example, put time and energy into figuring out exactly how to research, operationalize, and measure creativity or innovation. There is so much to learn from these initiatives, but it is not easy for government to justify investing in a project that risks doing things wrong or even right, but with insufficient data in terms of accountability. And it's so true. We, Auditor General, the type of data that is weighted by uh, those structures are so different from what we are trying to put in place with those kind of initiatives that the pressure is really pretty high. Even for several servants who understand where we're going, but uh, have difficulty to, to make the sale. Uh, the fourth one is uh, time horizons. Oh, I already up over there uh, on the screen. Uh, finally, time is key. Uh, as you know, government of all political stripes suffer from short-termism, the pressure to make it seem like difficult and apparently intractable goals of course, such as reducing or eliminating poverty, have made great strides several months before the next election. In contrast, uh, philanthropy takes the long view that its resources amount to patient capital. An example of this we could be seen in social change, which are by very definition long-term processes in which uh, the forces of a multitude of actors intertwine in a complex dance. Then, what is the timeline for a project such as this? Well, however long it takes. Uh, the conflict between serving the wants of an impatient electorate eager to see results for their tax dollar and responding with a long-term commitment to answer the needs can greatly complexify relationship when foundations seek to partner with those we told in short-term cultures. Finally, accountability. I went through a bit through this already with the other ones. The laws and programs developed by government are subject to a democratic adoption process that gives them a form of consensus in the public sphere. Social political studies have demonstrated that the population of Quebec felt deprived of this democratic process of public funds management when we announced our partnership with the government. It is important to know that in Quebec, our foundation establishment and our close tie to government have destabilized communities on two fronts. First, Quebec society, and particularly its francophone population, is unfamiliar with, it's still unfamiliar with philanthropy, and relies on the state for the redistribution of wealth. The legitimacy of a private organization with considerable capital such as ours has been challenged since our organization inception. And second, the gov government openness to working closely with private resources to address complex social issues, such as combating poverty, has been also openly condemned, especially when some of those groups are expecting money from government. This raises an important question, how can philanthropy gain the social acceptability that will allow us to become an actor capable of influencing public policy? Although this is a question that we continue to ponder, the lessons learned from our past experience have confirmed to us that in Quebec, social acceptability is hard to establish if our ties with the government are in the form of a joint venture, as in our past initiative. And I, I don't know if it's a, ref, a reflection of our new independence voice since 
uh, we took that decision with government, but pretty lately, as some of you know, we joined collaborative efforts to take position in the public sphere, uh, either for inequalities, the decision made in Quebec around inequalities, or of course in early childhood. As the title of my speech indicates, the philanthropy government partnership gives rise to a dance whose variable pace is sometimes more favorable to one partner in comparison to the other. Looking back at the cultural differences documented by our experience over the past 15 years, I ask myself often, is it possible to find the perfect pace for both partners? For even if the pace is intended to be even, the forces of each partner are not. By way of natural attraction, the aim of that type of partnership is inevitably swayed in the direction of governmental structure. Then another question, how then is it possible to bring the partner out of such patterns and to show it other ways of seeing and doing things? Even if our relationship over the past year has opened up a breach in traditional approaches, our experience has shown that it is difficult to bring about change and working in tight proximity does not necessarily guarantee this change. Actually, it's pretty fragile. We've just seen this in the recent change of power in Quebec. To these observa observations, spell the end of our intention to work with government? Of course not. Uh, however, our future collaboration will have different bases and will involve other state institutions and other organizations as opposed to agreements solely with the government. To conclude, uh, the essence of philanthropy and philanthropic action is still rather unclear for many state officials and bureaucrats. We need to have a better definition of what we are. Many different opinions and judgments exist, and more important, they still do not appreciate the scope and flexibility we have for innovation. Most important, strategic philanthropy informed by a risk-taking culture that desire to advance innovative ideas about a better society is more critical than ever, as we can see actually in our context in Quebec. It is with strong partnership, stronger partnership with diverse community, private and public leaders that we can forge pathways to the safer, healthier, and more just and prosperous future for the many, not just for the few. In the final analysis, though, we continue to believe that the best ideas need to be turned into sustainable uh, po public policies, then the quest for understanding how best to work with government will be key. The learning in this regard must continue. I thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be open for sort of a focus group after if we wish to continue the conversation. <laughs> thank you.